Right. Okay. Hello. Up. Hey Sean, all right? Yeah, yeah, you? Yeah. yeah, good mate, not bad. How was your uh, drive to Cardiff? Long. <laughs> <laughs> 250 mile there, 250 mile back. Jesus. Yeah, well, well the missus come with me, thinking, oh. you know, when I get tired, you know, or if I, if I feel I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm losing concentration, she can yeah. take over for a bit. Nah, she didn't want to drive the van on the motorway. <laughs> so she just ended up talking shit to me, so keep me keep me awake for bloody <laughs> ten hours. Right, let's see who's in. Alison, hey Alison. Hi. You alright? Yes, thanks. Good. <laughs> I've already done circuits today, so I'm <laughs> pretty insane then. Hey, well, this is dedication, yeah, so you got a little bit of that sort of bodyweight cardio stuff from earlier. Yeah. And uh, we try and talk, you know, a little bit more targeted work uh, this evening, so brilliant, well done. Thank you. Hey. Okay. Right, it's a pretty warm and humid day, so we'll we'll uh, we'll skip the the raise of the body temperature. Let's go straight into doing a little bit of mobilisation for the shoulder girdle, um, and hopefully mm -hmm. use your Use your crowd will join us. I'll just mute that part. Yeah, no, no worries, Sean. Um, right then, so let's make a start. Um, let's just change that. So there, that's better. All right then, so let's try and open up the chest and upper back to start with. Uh, what we're going to need today, uh, I'll talk through the workout in just a second. Couple of sturdy chairs for dips and decline push-ups. Uh, we're not going to do any fly variants today, as I want to introduce you to uh, a bit of matrix training if you've never done that before. I'll explain what that's all about in just a second. But let's try and mobilise these shoulders first up anyway. So give yourself a hug, open up that uh, that upper back, take the shoulders into protraction a little bit, and then uh, take these thumbs behind so we get a little bit of that external rotation and we get a bit of a stretch across the chest fibres. So give yourself a hug and then take everything back and behind. So it's horizontal adduction and abduction across, across the torso. So this will naturally warm us up anyway. We're keeping the body moving. It's a hot and humid day, so not mega emphasis on raising the body temperature, raising the heart rate today. I mean, it's probably nice and warm and comfortable in your front rooms. So it's not like you're in a cold environment. So flexion and extension of the shoulder then, staying on the shoulder. Girdle, making that our priority to start with. We can come back over these in a minute loaded with some light dumbbells. We can go across now, let's change the angles. And the other way. 
into external rotation. Just trying to look after all planes of movement through the shoulder. Lots of kicking and groaning going on in my left shoulder. Okay, ancillary muscle groups which are going to help us today. Lats, lower back. So we need to turn our attention to those. So as we come across the body there, we're going to stretch out those lats. In shoulder abduction coming across. The reason we lean with it is because it further increases the distance between origin and insertion of the lats which is what we want with these dynamic stretches. If you fall into flexion, you're going to lose that stretch. So stay in extension with the hips. A little bit of rotation through the midsection. Remember to free up those feet so that you don't strain those knees. A few little clicks from my lower back. Always good practice to try and activate the glutes, hamstrings, a bit of lower back as well. So we'll have a little bit of hip hinge work. So hinge at the hips and then come back up. Swing through, these little swing throughs. Very similar to a kettlebell swing in its movement. Okay, a little breather there. Let's take, let's take a hold of some light dumbbells or some tins of food. If you've still got your body weight, that's okay. We can go over it again. Just want to try and load up on this external rotation to start with. Just a pair of ones, I think I've got here. Just light, nice and light. A few overhead press. Into some side raises. Just a few. Tipping at the pelvis. Scapular depression retraction. Squeeze the upper back together. And a little rest there, happy with that. Just really, really quick mobilization of the predominantly the muscle groups of the upper body and shoulder girdle, really. So, the workout today then is matrix theme. So, if you had a look on social media earlier, a little curious as to what the workout involves today. So, I'll pop the workout at two o'clock, and obviously, we're doing this at six o'clock. So, it gives you an opportunity to go and have a look. Um, you'll see some references on the workouts to matrix. Now, what basically matrix training is changing the turnaround point of the lift. So if you think about any movement that you do in the gym, let's take, let's take the, um, the classic bench press as the go-to example for all these things. So I'm working my bench press, I'm all the way down to my chest, and I'm all the way back up to the top. Down to my chest, all the way back to the top. The accepted way of doing your, your chest presses, your bench presses. Now, the most stressful point of the lift is the deceleration from the negative into the positive. Okay, so the most stressful portion of any lift is the turnaround point from the negative portion of the lift into the positive portion of the lift. That's the most stressful point. Now, if that point is always in this, if that turnaround point is always at the same point, then the most stressful portion of the lift is always in the same point of the lift. So if I always bench press to my chest, the most stressful portion of that lift is always at the bottom, bottom of the movement. Whereas if I did some half presses, the most stressful point is at the halfway mark. If I did some quarter presses, the most stressful point is the turnaround between the negative and the positive. And that point changes depending on where we change the turnaround point. And matrix is all about that. All right, it's all about changing the turnaround point between the negative and the positive to try and change the stresses on the targeted muscle. And we're going to try and introduce that to you today. If you haven't done it, you may well, you might have trained this way. It's been around eight years, matrix training, decades. But most people don't know about it in the gym, so it's always nice to touch on these new methods. So we're going to do a little bit of matrix stuff for the chest to start with around the variance of the push-up. Uh, then we into the shoulders, uh, power push away is matrix style, and triceps, a couple of steady tricep movements, uh, matrix style, just to see how challenging it is compared to the sort of workouts that we've done in the past. So our chest workout then, we've got no supersets or anything. It's pretty much just straight sets today, which makes it a little bit easier to get your head round. So we've got an adducted push-up to start with, two sets matrix style. And if you had a look earlier, it's, it's got five, 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 five. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through that uh, in just a second. So we're going to do the adducted push-ups where you drop and twist across. 
we're going to do five full ones, five half standard push-ups at the bottom, five half standard push-ups at the top, and then five adducted push-ups again. So five full reps, five half at the bottom, five half at the top, and then five full. That's our five, 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 five matrix style set. We're going to run that twice. Um, so I'll give, you, I'll give you a little demo as to what that will look like down on the floor so that you can sort of see it and you know what, you know what you're, you're getting, getting up to. So I won't do the full amount of reps, but uh, you're going to do five of these adducted push-ups. So I'm going to drop my chest to the floor, up and twist across, drop my chest to the floor, up and twist across. So you'll do five of those. Once you've done five of those, staying in the push-up position, drop to the bottom and just come up to halfway. Half a push-up. Once you've done five of those, from the halfway, we do half at the top. Once you've done five of those, we'll drop into the bottom again and coming up into those adducted push-ups, we push across. To give you 20 reps, um, start, start full in the full push-up position. As fatigue kicks in towards, I don't know, rep 13, 14, 15, 16, wherever fatigue catches up with you, remember that you can drop to your knees to see out the set. All right, so that's the workout. Five adducted, five half at the bottom, five half at the, to uh, at the top, and then five adducted again. So as soon as you feel good and ready, let's try and work through a good 20 reps on this first set of uh, matrix-style adducted push-ups. So as soon as you're ready then, away we go. So you've got 20 reps to shoot for. Let's see how we go. I'll join in with you now. Let's just see how... How these work. All right, here we go. Do the first set off my knees. I've just finished doing training chest in there, so there's a bit of fatigue. Do the first set off my knees. Drop. Up and across. Up and across for the first five. Three. Four. Five now. I've got my halves at the bottom. Try not to rush it. Keep time and attention. I've now my halves at the top. That's 15. Now my adducted ones again. Finish. Not too bad off the knees yet, as you, as you would expect. That's going to be a lot tougher working off the, the feet. So first set in there, we're just going to do two sets of those. 60 seconds breather. So I'm going to try the next set to full. If I hadn't done my chest workout just a second ago, I'd have had a, you know, I'd have got to try to get a little bit more out of this session myself and I'd have gone full there. But I know my chest pretty much shot away from what I've just done. So no point to flogging a dead horse, as they say. So again, hopefully you're feeling the stresses on the muscle change as we change that sort of turnaround between the, uh, between the positive and the negative. So there's this sort of um, misconception in gyms and health clubs and fitness centres. that You've got to do a full, you know, it's got to be a full rep every time, all the way down, all the way up. Absolute nonsense, you know. You can do half reps, you can do quarter reps, you can do partial reps. As long as there's a good reason for doing so and it's well thought out. You know, let's say you've got a shoulder injury, you've got some impingement, uh, or you've got some labrum issues on the inside of the inside of the capsule of the glenoid of the shoulder, and you can only bench press partially. You know, better to bench press partially than not do any do, do it at all. So, you know, it all depends on everyone's circumstances really as to whether we're doing four reps or not. All right, so let's have a little crack at second set then. So try these full now, see if I can do the full 20. See how we go. Right, so away we go. <laughs> Touching my chest down every time. Chest down. Every light touch on the floor. <laughs> right, that's me five, half at the bottoms. Touch down every time. Light. There's five at the bottom. There's be five at the top. Right, here we go, last five. Oh, just about. Not the best of reps at the end, but 
a tough and challenging 20 there. Five abducted, five half at the bottom, five half at the top, and five abducted. Push up two sets. Dawn on the first exercise for chest. We're going to stay with the push up theme. We're going to try and change the angles now to replicate a decline press and an incline press on the barbells or the dumbbells. And we can do that using the, uh, the chairs. So you're going to need a nice sturdy chair or a table or something. Something where you can get your, you can change angle of your torso. You get your legs up behind you for the decline presses. Then we're going to turn around and get your legs below for the, uh, for the incline chest press. So the, the decline push-up targets the upper clavicle, top part of the chest this time. So it's the weaker movements. The, anatomically, it's not as strong. So we get those done while we're fresh. And then we spin around and do the incline, which tend to hit the lower fibres of the chest. Just a little bit more by nature of the angle that you're pushing at. So the next movement. Going to bring in the chairs. Or well, one one chair is fine. It's up to really whatever whatever you want. So from there, feet up on those, and we're going to go for sevens this time. We've got seven, seven, seven. So the matrix seven styles is kind of like twenty ones on the bicep. So I've got seven at the bottom, seven there. Seven in the middle, seven at the top. And that's, uh, that's quite challenging. But don't rush them. Just because they're partial reps, your knees are hurting. Just because they're partial reps doesn't mean that uh, you, don't, you, know, you, want the, you don't want the quality of them to suffer. So still take care to squeeze and focus your mind on the muscle and not rush the, t the time that the muscle is under load with you know you still want that time under tension so the decline push-up position feet up on your chairs seven bottom third seven mid third seven top third that's your set and we're going to we're going to run that twice we'll, we'll reverse it for the second one so starting at the bottom for your first set then so away we go then let's see how these look i'm going to try and take my time so that i've got a little bit of time under tension and I'm not sacrificing the quality of my reps. So here we go. Seven at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now seven in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now seven at the top. Come on. Oh, oh, just about. That's a tough set. Felt that on the chest. So we've got one more of those to do at that angle with the feet elevated. But this time we're going to reverse the sevens process. We're going to stay on sevens, but start with seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom for our final set at this angle. Another few seconds. Tough set that. All right, so let's get set up. Let's have another go. Decline push up matrix style. Seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom. Let's see what this set feels like. Challenging, I should imagine. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the middle. Seven at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. 
Oh. Nice planter at the end. Oh, hard set. A little recovery. So hopefully we're feeling it on the chest. I certainly am. So we've got, we've gone from these flat adducted push-ups, which was the first exercise, into these decline presses, which target the upper clavicle upper portion of the chest as our second exercise. Now we're gonna spin the angle the other way and go for an incline push-up, which hits the abdominal head of the chest fibers a little bit more by nature of the angle that you're pressing after still still shoulders triceps and, and the chest working it's just a little bit more lower portion of your chest and the, these reps are done here again we can set up our chairs i want to set it up so i can get a little bit of a stretch on the chest so i've got a little bit of a gap so i can get a good stretch at the bottom most important to get a stretch at the bottom. We're going to go 777 style again. Two sets, bottom, middle, top for the first set, top, middle, bottom for the second set. And your reps are going to be done in this position here. So I've got my reps there at the bottom, my reps there in the middle, and my reps there at the top. Um, obviously, better quality than that when you do come around to doing them. And that's going to be our next set. So, if you get a little set up for that, we'll start that in a few seconds' time. <sighs> Feeling my chest. Shot. This is our last chest exercise now. Then we're into our shoulders after that. Got some power push aways and some isolation work for the shoulders after this. Simple stuff today, but working a matrix technique. And then into triceps after that. All right, then. So, if we're good and ready. Let's have a go at these incline angled uh, press ups. Anatomically, the easiest of the press ups that we've done so far, which is good because we're tired, getting tired in this pressing position there where I am anyway. So let's have a little go. Seven at the bottom, third, stretch. One, two, that's good reps. Three, four, five, stretch. Six, seven, seven in the middle. Seven at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh. Tough one. Felt that. Felt that in my chest. A little bit in my shoulders, front shoulder. A little bit in my triceps, assisting there. You can feel those. But predominantly chest. Little breather. We've got one more set on chest to do, one more set on these push ups. And exactly the same as on our decline press ups a second ago, we're going to change these sevens around. So we're going to go seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom to give us another 21s set of matrix. And then we're into the movements for our shoulders after that. Little breather, give the body every opportunity to get good quality reps for our chest in just a second. Remember, it's not about doing endless fast paced work. You know, Alison, you did the circuits this morning. You know, Sean, you're probably doing your cardio with other, other sessions through the week. You know, that's not, uh, that's not the box you want to tick today. We just want you to feel this chest on these exercises, just feel your chest getting tired, getting tired, getting battered, you're stretching those fibers, you get some blood in this area. That's, that's the idea is we're targeting them more isolated to, to, to the muscles we want to work today. So a different approach, different approach. Right, last set of these. Seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom. Let's see how we go. Get the last out of your chest before moving on to the shoulders. As soon as you're ready for, this, for these sevens, away you go. Seven at the top. One, two, three, four, six, 
seven, seven in the middle. Seven off the stretch at the bottom. One, stretch it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, good. Quite like those incline ones at the end. It gave you an opportunity to focus on your chest a bit more instead of just gritting your teeth and trying to grind out the reps as best you can. So good that we finished with the incline one at the end, just as it sort of got mechanically easier. Crikey, he's chucking it down. Whew. Right, shoulders done. Into deltoids, or uh, sorry, chest done. Into deltoids, shoulders now. So remember the golden rule when it comes to trying to train your chest, shoulders, and triceps with body weight. It's all about the angles. If my hips are down and my head is up, Chest, if I'm piked, then I get my hips over me as best, I, as best I possibly can. Then we know we're changing that from a chest press position into a military press position, which is going to help us hit the shoulders. Um, so we've got power pushaways. The power pushaways have been a staple for us over these, what, I think we've been locked down in 12 weeks or something now, isn't it? So for the last 12 weeks, we've been using these power pushaways. Uh, so as a our, you know, bread and butter shoulder exercise. And it's a great exercise in the absence of having the bar and dumbbells. So your power push away is matrix style. We're going to go five on this one for a set. So let me get set up for you for a little demo. Move this chair out of the way. We don't need these at the moment. So we're up and over ourselves. So we've got five full. So just a quick reminder, drop and push up. We've got five full. Then we've got five half at the top. Then we're dropping into the bottom. We've got five half at the bottom. And then we've got back to our five full. Even those, even those demonstrations, <laughs> I can feel it in my shoulders. All right, so we know the movement. We know the body positions. All we have to do is apply this matrix mythology to it, and we're just changing the, uh, we're adding that, we're adding that bright, all right, so, which is good. Software's getting bored, and our bodies are something fresh to respond to for our bodies. All right then, let's, let's have a little crack at it then. Five full, five half at the top, five half at the bottom, five full. Let's see how we get that. <sighs> Tough sentence going to be. Right, away we go. Hips over your hips over you as best you can. One, two, three, four, five. Half at the top. One, two, three, four, five. Staying low half at the bottom. Four, one, oh my God. Two, three, two more. Four, oh, last one. Shoulders left me then. Oh. That's one of the toughest sets we've done for shoulders, I think. That was hard. Felt that 20 reps. All right, second set on power pushaways is now sevens. Seven in the bottom third, seven in the mid third, seven in the top third. Good rest though, otherwise we're never gonna get them. Give your body every opportunity. If you can't do them, do sixes. Do fives, do fours, doesn't matter. Four at the bottom, four in the middle, four at the top. Whatever's going to overload your shoulders is perfectly fine. All right, as long as we've got overload. We get that overload, we've got that response. We've got that stimulus, 
we've got that response. Should we drink on? All right, let's get set up for these sevens. How are we doing for time? Whoa, we're flying through this one. Half past. Second set on these power pushaways. Seven at the bottom, seven in the middle, seven at the top. This isn't going to be easy, but let's see how we get on. As soon as you're ready, away you go. Seven at the bottom. Six, seven, seven in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> there wasn't very many left in the tent there. The shoulders are killing me. Oh. <sighs> A breather. Oh, them shoulders. Oh, my shoulders. Whew, really feel that on my shoulders. We've got one more set of those to do. But as we did with the push ups for chest 10 minutes ago or so, we're going to change the sevens around. Seven at the top. Seven in the middle, seven at the bottom, 21 reps. Challenging work for the shoulders. Final set on this compound sort of shoulder exercise before we get into a little bit of isolation. We're not going to do matrix isolation for this. It's, it's, all, it's an awkward movement. So we're just going to do a bog standard two sets of 12 each side before moving into our triceps. But we've got, before we get to that, Getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here. We've got one more power push away set to do. Seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom. Another 20 seconds recovery or so. Oh, feeling this one today. I don't think it's helping that I've just trained my chest earlier. Right, come on, let's have a let's hit him go. All right, here we go. Seven, 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 final set power pushaways. Then we look at these isolation movements for our shoulders. Here we go. Seven at the top. Good control reps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, seven at the bottom. One, two, three, four, four, little rest pause. Three to go for me, then to get me a rep canteen. Five, six, seven. Oh, shoulders. Whew. Good rest there. I'm just going to nip and get another drink, whatever you say. Tough for our shoulders. So let's think about the recruitment of the shoulders while we're having a little breather, while we're having some fluids. Now, the orientation of the fibers when you're in that power push away position makes this very anterior deltoid dominant with a bit of medial. 
but not much going on on the medial rear, rear with the medial. So we need to change that around a bit. So we're going to do those plank uh, um, relative motion, um, ad, ad, you know, the, the rear delt is responsible for um, horizontal abduction of the upper arm. So we're going to get into that movement if we can. So there's going to be a little bit of rear delt. Uh, there's going to be rear delt with a bit of assistance from the medial delt in the plank position. So just a quick reminder. So side plank position, we've done these. These are becoming a, a regular for us. This is difficult. This is okay. This is a little bit easier. So you've got some mechanics. Change the mechanics of the lift with his arm. 12 reps, you know, make, make, make it tough. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is turn, 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 90 degrees at the shoulders until I feel a stretch in this, this shoulder that's holding me up, and then back up to the top. And it's that relative movement that's going to give us the recruitment for your medial, and mostly the rear deltoid, that horizontal abduction is the movement. So we know it's going to be rear delt dominant because of that movement. No matrix on this one, a straight two sets of 12 each side. So let's do 12 on the left, flip over 12 on the right, bit of recovery, same again, and uh, we're into triceps after that. So in your own time then, we've done these before. Let's smash them out. Let's see if we can get 12. Let's see how we go. Turn 90 degrees. Feel them shoulders. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oof. Oh man, tough. Quick swap. Here we go. Turn, 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 Oh, that wasn't easy. First set done. See you later, Jules. See ya. Oh. Oh. Felt that in the back of my shoulder. 60 seconds breather. We're going to run that one more time before getting into two matrix movement for triceps. One movement with the shoulder in flexion, one movement with the shoulder in extension when we do get to our triceps. But again, we've got this last set on shoulders to get to, to do first, so let's not get ahead of ourselves too much. Another few seconds. We're gonna run another 12 each side on that uh, rear delt work. Rear and medial delt work. Okay, so a little rest there. If we feel good, let's have a go at the second set of this isolated movement, this more isolated movement for. The uh, shoulders by isolation, there's less chest and less tricep in it. There's a bit of core going on by nature of the plank, but it's a bit more isolated through the shoulder. The shoulder's doing the vast majority of the, of the work. All right, here we go then. Another 12 would be really nice. Let's see what you can get. Away we go. Oh, work the negative. Work it. Yeah. 
Whew. Tough start. Left side. Into my right side then. Another good try, but see. See my shoulders nice and tired. Yes. Halfway. Three quarters. One more. Oh. Oh. The trick is trying to stay as relaxed as you can whilst maintaining good body position and good form. Easier said than done. Shoulders done, chest done, shoulders done. Take some fluids on board, been recovery. Let's have a chat about what's on the agenda for triceps. So, time is it? 22, good stuff. On course still. So, we talked about the mechanics, we talk a lot about the mechanics of all the muscles that we use. But, do talk about the shoulder, the tricep, and the, tri the role of the tricep and the anatomy of the tricep. Spans two joints. It's called the biarticular uh, biarticular muscle. As it spans two joints, it spans the elbow and the shoulder joint. So we can influence it at the shoulder, and we can influence it at the elbow. Of course, we know that the vast majority of tricep exercises involve this elbow extension. It's, extension of the, of the arm but we can also change whether the muscle is on stretch here or whether the muscle is on peak contraction here with our hands behind us or our upper arm behind us I should say so our first exercise is on the chairs I'm going to bring a chair in matrix again two sets I think we're on sevens I think now yeah seven set uh, oh no Five, five, five to start. I start us off, and then seven. So we've got three sets each. So reasonably fast-paced tricep work. So the first movement is dips, which is going to be challenging. Going to be challenging is the dips. So I'm going to set myself up with a gap in my chairs. My backside is going to fall into that gap, so that I'm not travelling. With any horizontal in any horizontal plane, I'm traveling in the vertical plane. So I've got my hands here, I've got my dips. I'm gonna do five full, five half at the bottom, five half at the top, and then five full. Concentrating on squeezing my triceps, concentrating on keeping my chest through, concentrating on keeping my elbow behind me so that my shoulder is in extension and my tricep is on peak, squeezed during these reps. Uh, those are the teaching points, really, and keep the uh, keep the, the the movement in the vertical plane, not the horizontal plane. So you're moving up and down, as opposed to forwards and backwards. That's it, really. Dips you can do. All you've got to do is apply this matrix theme to it. So first set, five full, five half at the bottom, five half at the top, five full. That's going to kick a bit of fatigue into the triceps, and that's going to be a great start for our tricep. Right, let's have this tri these triceps done then. Away we go, surgery. One. Good reps, two. Three. Four. Five. Five at the bottom. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five half at the top. Five, four, one, two, three, four, five, oh. pinching the back of the arm. Whew. Tough set. Kick off the triceps. Felt that. Minutes breather. Maybe a bit less. Second set's going to be sevens. 
seven at the bottom, seven in the middle, seven at the top. And our final set on these is going to be seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom. So we're learning this matrix theme. We're applying these matrix principles to our bread and butter exercises, our staple exercises that we've been using week on week on week, uh, just to add that little bit of variety, just to add that little bit of different stress, and just to build that, that gym IQ. You can add matrix, you can do matrix to anything. Machine press, lat pull downs, chin ups if you're strong enough, lat pull down, row, rowing machine, whew, TRX, kettlebells, depending on the movement that you're doing with the kettlebells. You know, your body weight stuff. You know, whatever you want to do, you can, you can add that matrix to it just to, just to give you a bit of variety. Calves is particularly painful. You do matrix for your calves, you get a good burn on the lower leg. Matrix for upper leg is tough as well because you, you find yourself in different stressful points that you wouldn't normally be on your leg. All right, second set coming up then. Seven at the bottom, seven in the middle, seven at the top, third, bottom third, mid third, top third, you're working in thirds. Second set, as soon as you're ready. Again, let's, let's get it out, let's get it let's have it. Here we go, seven at the bottom. Seven, seven in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven at the top. Squeeze, nip them. Ready, four, five, six, seven. Ooh. Oof. Another quick chat while we recover about scapular depression and dips. Because I'm supporting my weight in this dipping position, what tends to happen is my torso will sink, and my head will sink into my torso. I've got this shrugged position. What you're supposed to do when you're doing your reps is apply scapular depression, and then you activate those lower traps. The lower traps pull the scapula down. You get a strong mid-back. Um, easier said than done. So you only have to look at my set there to see that I was, my neck was disappearing, those lower traps switching off, and ciliary muscle groups, assisting muscle groups, um, very important, often, often neglected. Apply scapular depression when you're doing your parallel bar dips, when you're doing your bench dips, otherwise these shoulders end up creeping up as you perform your set. Your, your torso is going to be dragged down by gravity. Final set on the chair, dips coming up. Seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom. Here we go. If you feel good and ready, let's try those matrix seven sevens. The distance you have your feet away, of course, alters the load. So, you know, you can alter the load depending on how you feel. Right, the final set on the chair, dips. Away we go, seven at the top. Nip these. Six, seven, seven in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Whew, I did a better job of scapular depression that time. Didn't feel like my head was sinking down too far, which is good. Just being aware of these things. Really felt letting me triceps. So that's a great start. It's my tricep workout. Now, as we said at the very at the very beginning of our tricep workout, we can work the triceps on peak with our shoulders in extension and hyperextension behind us, or we can work our shoulders on uh, stretch, the origin and insertion are far away when the shoulder is in flexion. All right, so we're going to get a little bit more stretch to the tricep now by getting an exercise where the shoulder's in flexion as opposed to having a shoulder in extension behind us. 
chair tricep extensions for this. We've done these before. Just going to apply matrix theme to them. Hopefully we can feel this. We well, we feel it on the tricep a bit. Uh, right. So let's get the camera set up. See what's going on. Quick demos. Right. Off the knees is fine for this scene as we're going to go matrix style. Hands on top, elbows tucked. So I don't want to rotate my elbows outwards. I don't want that internal rotation of the shoulder. I want that external rotation. So if you're turning your thumbs out that way, keep the gap between your elbows uh, minimal as much as your flexibility levels will allow. And we've got our chair tricep extensions, which is here. We've done them before. Let the head drop below. That stretches out your triceps. At the bottom of the movement, just bring your elbows in close together, don't let them flare, bring them in. So I've got five reps there. I've got five reps at the bottom, bottom half. I've got five reps at the top half. And then I've got five full reps. That's the first, uh, whew, even, the even the demos, I can feel that on the tricep. That's the first set. Second set is sevens, uh, bottom, middle, top. Third set is sevens, top, middle, bottom. That's the end of it for triceps then. Good stretch off and we've had a great session for the chest, had a great session for the shoulders, and we've had a great session for the triceps. Applying what we call a matrix theme, changing the turnaround point to anything positive, and we've learned something new that we can apply in the gym. Perfect. So let's have a go at these chair triceps extensions then. Five full. Five half at the bottom, five half at the top, five full. So 20 reps total. This is going to be tough. You're going to feel this on the triceps. Take your time with the reps. Take your hips with you. Don't keep your hips back. Take your hips into every rep. Um, keep your knees back as best you can. Keep your elbows close together. A little bit of uh, adduction across the torso keeps your elbows together. Flexibility allowing. Again, I'm not very flexible. But uh, six, here we go. So a few teaching points there for you to think about. Right, away we go. Five falls are going to keep us off. Stretch, extension. Take the stretch, extension. Stretch, try some extension. Stretch, try some extension. One more. All right, that's me five fall. Now I'm going to hang out at stretch. Stretch, half up. Stretch, half up. One more. Now I'm going to go for peak. One, two, three at the top, four at the top, five at the top. Now I've got the toughest five yet, five, four to finish. One, squeeze your triceps. Two, don't rush it. Three, take the stretch. That's four, squeeze them at the top, last one. Ooh, come on. There's not much load going through the tricep there, or the angles and nature of it. But oh, did that hurt? I think I feel these more, maybe at this point, than what I quite like this matrix style. It's reminding me that I've not done it in the gym for a long time, and it's a great way to stimulate your muscle systems whilst giving your joints a rest, because you're not always working at the extremity of travel at the joint. And the nature of, of this, uh, these is you're not, you're always using sub maximal loads. So if you're always doing three reps, four reps, five reps, six reps, you're loading the bar, you're picking up the heaviest dumbbells that you can muster, and it's straining these joints all the time. You know, if you want to advance your physique, but you don't, you want to let those joints rest, or you're thinking, crikey, my elbows hurt, or my shoulders hurt, or my bicep tendons hurting all the time, or my knees are shot away. Matrix training is brilliant because you can stress these muscles without picking up the heaviest dumbbells, without loading up the bar, you know, and you really, really feel it. I can really, really feel it. And training like this six, six eight, ten weeks, you're keeping your body moving forwards. And you're allowing those joints to rest. So, again, you can then lift heavy a little bit later, later on down the line. So it's a great way of training this. Not enough guys and girls use it in the gym. Um, I do try and encourage it when I can, but uh, 
yeah, what, well worth throwing in for a little period when you periodize your training. Chuck, chuck your matrix in there every now and again to let these joints rest, particularly if you're a more mature trainer like myself, mid mid forties. You, you know, you, you, we're not young young kids jumping about the place anymore, so we've got to train that little bit smarter and get away with it when you're a kid. Right, uh, sevens now. Then I'm going to go sevens from a stretch. Sevens in the middle, sevens at the top. Right, here we go. Sevens on stretch to start us off. As soon as you're ready and you're happy and you're set, keep the teaching points in mind. Off we go. Seven at the bottom. It's just a third now. This time's a bit smaller. Stretch them every rep. I've already hurt it. Six. Seven. Now in the mid third. Hips weak. Elbows close. Seven. Now the peak. One. Nip the tricep. Two. Hips weak. Five. Six. Ooh, burn it. Oh, Oof, great burn in the tricep, that one. Oof. One more set. Seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom. And we're done, we're cooked. What time is it? Fifty-six. So we're looking at about that hour again. Oh. Little recovery. Few seconds then. Start this final set on triceps. Seven at the top, seven in the middle, seven at the bottom. Jobs are good. Right, let's have them then. Final bit. I'm going to go back with my knees now, try and challenge and tax these triceps last set. So from that straight arm, I'm looking for seven, one third, just there. I'm going to nip my triceps every time at the top. Two, three, four. I've hurt it already. Five. Cumulative fatigue. fatigue. Right, that's seven. Seven in the middle third. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven on stretch. One, two, three. Oh, God. Oh, God. That burns. Oh, done. <laughs> Finished. Bit of stretching to do, and we're done. So, two minutes to. Fluids, stretches on the muscles that we've tried to, tried to target. Chest first. So remember what we said, internal rotation promotes uh, the anterior, the front portion of the shoulder. External rotation promotes the chest. So turn your thumbs over, take your hands behind, and get the hands behind you. So we get that chest on stretch. Put a little pulse on it if you want. Point your thumbs behind you. Get the chest stretched out. Lengthen those fibers. We do need to do some stretching of the front delt. Uh, I can get my hands behind me here with my chair, or I can just internally rotate, which points these fibers forwards and try the same stretch. So thumbs down and behind would also get my front delt. It's the fibers which are facing forwards away from the stretch that get stretched. So again, I can put a pulse on there if I want to stretch out those chest and shoulder fibers. 
uh, rest and relax there. So working our way around the shoulder, these fibers which run down in the medial, uh, which are responsible for this vertical abduction, uh, we just need to take into a full, fully adducted position here. And you can maybe see the fibers are just on stretch, and that's the position that we that we want them in to get a, to get them stretched out. Palm up essentially is going to help you get that position. Stretching out the shoulders, just reverse engineering the muscular contraction really to put them on stretch. So if you know how the muscle contracts, it's dead easy. You you, you know how it stretches. Change over. That's the one. The rear head of the deltoid is responsible for horizontal abduction. That movement there, away from the chest. So to put it on stretch, take it into horizontal adduction, the opposing movement. Palm stays down and the elbow stays up to help us stretch the rear part of the shoulder on this one. Fifteen, twenty seconds. You can stretch them longer if you like, but it's just to, just trying to alleviate any soreness tomorrow. Pop, pop a little bit of emphasis on mobility as well, which is really important. And lastly, biarticular triceps spans the shoulder, spans the elbow. So elbow flexion coupled with shoulder flexion puts the tricep on full stretch. So that's where we want to be with the tricep. Feel that in the tricep. Change over. Uh, rest there, brilliant, all done. I think there's only three of us there, but we had a good, good workout. Thanks for joining in. Hopefully we get a few more tomorrow for, um, for our uh, upper body pull, all the opposing muscle groups. We're going to apply a matrix theme to that as well. So that should be, that should be good fun as well, I'm hoping, he says. So <laughs> thank you both. Cheers, Pat. Thank you. No worries, Sean. Pleasure, mate, as always. See you soon. Yeah, all right. That, I could feel that. I think that yeah, it, 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 does, it does give you a chance to focus your mind on the muscles a bit more. I enjoyed that one. It was good. You can do that in the gym. Great workout. And like, like I said, yeah. the resting, resting joints, they're just feeling, feeling the strain. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic way to keep your body moving forwards and give, giving these joints a chance to rest. Really good yeah. way of training. Definitely, yeah. 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 Cheers, for that, mate. No, no worries, Sean. See you later. See you tomorrow. Cheers, mate. Cheers. See you, Alison. If you're still here. She's gone.